soul food, please take an opportunity to buy something uh, to drink or eat if you haven't done that already, either now or at the break. And thank our wonderful soul food books and coffee house for having us here. We have two wonderful readers tonight, and I'm, I'm very pleased to have both of them come and share their work with you. But before we do that, I have a poem to read by an Australian poet named Les Murray. It's called, I Wrote a Little Haiku. I wrote a little haiku called, titled, The Springfields. Lead drips out of a burning farm rail, their civil war. Critics didn't like it, said it was obscure. The title was the rifle both American sides bore. Lead was its heavy bullet, the mine, which tore often wet with blood and sera into the farmyard timbers and forests of that era. Wood that burnt even now might still remelt and pour out runs of silvery ichor the size of wasted semen it had annulled before. That's Les Murray. Okay, we're ready to start with our two featured readers. By the way, if you'd like to sign up for the open mic, the sign-up sheet is right here. And the question of the month, which I really love, is what was the first piece of art you fell in love with? So write that next to your name uh, if you sign up for the open mic, please. Our first reader tonight is Brandon Pitts. He's the author of Tender in the Age of Fury. You can wave that book around if you like. It's a beautiful book, beautiful cover from Mosaic Press. Just came out. Uh, he's known sub for subverting gospel and scripture to create political allegories. Brandon first came onto the Toronto lit scene in 2010 with a short story, The BC Crib, published in a Canadian Voices anthology. In 2011, he was inducted into the pres prestigious Diaspora Dialogues as an emerging voice for fiction, followed by the novel Puzzle of Murders in 2011 and the popular poetry collection, Pressure to Sing, which could also wave around there. So please check those out at the break. He continued this run of productivity with the production of three plays and editing the anthology, The Courtney Park Connection, in 2013. Brandon has been living in Muckleteo since 2014. We're lucky to have him in this area. His website is brandonpitts.com, and he uh, will deliver some powerful poetry. So please welcome Brandon Pitts. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Redmond. Um, yeah, let's see. I'm going to I notice this restaurant hosts Bernie Sanders meetings. So uh that's cool. I like that. And uh normally I dedicate my first poem to Pope Francis. I think he's cool. And the original Christians, dangerous people who are thrown to the lions. And to the recently deceased Canadian poet Nick Beat for the day that he stood up in front of the entire congregation to confront the hypocritical priest, single-handedly reclaiming the last vestiges of rock and roll. But tonight I'm going to dedicate my first poem to GOP frontrunner Donald Trump in his bid for the presidency. For I have seen the ghastly writer, the one who is marked by a swarm of hummingbirds as he pursed his lips. His caste is uncommon. He is the patron of criminals, men who steal lives and abandon ethics in business. He dismounted and slowly walked through the streets that were aligned to the astral procession of the luminaries and stood before the great seal, its copper corrupted in green, though its strong arm bore a polished shield. On the edge of the ocean, before the cityscape, with outstretched arms, he summoned his minions, and out of the sea they came, the masters of all they envision, 
where I stood on the beach like an urchin in envy as they paraded their Nubian queens. And it was on that corner where I could see that my only option was to accept their number of weeks, a counter to track my movements as they provided for my every need. Spirits on the left to me, forces on the right. I looked to heaven where reality cracked, and the mystic host, the chayot, returned running. And those angels of a higher form kissed my lips, causing them to tingle as the ophanum hath forsaken, circling the fallen buildings. And the Elohim issued their warning. There will come to you a man with one eye. He will show you water that you cannot drink and fire that will not burn. A warning to others. He travels fast, as fast as the speed of light and can appear in many places at once and in as many forms. Speaking all the languages, reversing the edict of Babel, he will survive the flood. Fire and brimstone shall not harm him, for he carries with him a number, an ISP tattooed on his chest. And I saw the shadow rider, marksman of the Holocaust, impervious to rain as he stood above us on the knoll, making his presence known. And the believers bowed to him in worship. And in the rider's hand, he carried a well-worn tome marked with the iniquities of many generations. And the book was sealed with 12 locks. The rider broke the first four locks, releasing dust that smelled of sweet roses. He cracked the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth locks. Then came the smell of burnt sugar. Upon the breaking of the ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth locks, I could smell the revolting stench of all the world's rot and feces. The writer opened the book, and within its pages I paid witness to the horrors of many sleepless nights wandering through foreign landscapes of concrete and asphalt where the people spoke in whispers and hisses. Oh, daughter of Irma, it is you who could save me, taking my hand and leading me to righteous lands. Do not leave me to the madness of these streets where I am marked by their banks and tracked by their ID and ISP number of weeks. Oh, daughter of Irma, if you ever remember that you once loved me, you'll find me in the ocean drowning, alone to the world and peed on by the dogs of territory. But know this. I will die unmarked and free. Thank you. For it was the happiest time writing poetry as the pristine daughter lay naked next to me in her sleep. She had been perfect, and for the first time in many years, I had achieved mental peace. But the tyrants of fortune would not let me rest, for these were the days when they did not bury the dead, but held their souls in a virtual stasis. O oh, daughter of Irma, tender in your sleep, out of the sky came a white dove with a pine sprig balanced in its beak. It circled above us where we sat amongst the financiers of sickness, where the pain and slut of September distracted us with her hypnotic ways, feeding us numbing hallucinations and leaving us cursed with reality. But then there appeared upon the knoll a lone sheep who turned to face the crowds. And the sheep said, while you were shopping, these men of means took control of your mind. They shaved our wool to make mufflers for their wives, leaving us cold in a seemingly endless winter. Push down those senators, march upon that banker. Will there be a place for us in their heaven? We'd certainly make room for them in our hell. Lash marks upon my shoulders as I ring the church bell. Spurred on by the sheep's words, a young man stood from the crowd to confront the shallow rider issuing the challenge of the righteous and the young man said on the senate floor i will crush them to their fall o oh, the night rendezvous with the fifth column on the eve napoleon rides jesus called them shepherds though god weeps for the sheep don't let righteous men shave you take cannon to subway and streets shout shout holler to the masses or is your throat too numb to yell stand up if you feel cheated topple the overlords of wealth full tilt and spit and fire in my hand the new bible Sound out the custom gospel delivered with a rifle. On the Senate floor, I will crush them, overturn their flank. Take back the suzerainty I have given with my vote, I will reclaim. Woe to them in the smoke-darkened sky, for now the people will be the drainer on the eve Napoleon rides.
weeks. Copernicus shall cast no shadow. The apocalypse of weeks. Smash the walls of prisons. Sharpen the guillotine. Revolt, revolt before they take control of your food. Starve you into submission. Numb your mind with glass tubes. We continually follow your pointed finger. Though you have moved a thousand times. Using fables as weapons so black spots move about our eyes. Hey, where are we in the camp? In the tent? By the fire? Put the priest on the block and chain the black friar. Punish those who have taken Taken from you, there is no nutrients in what you eat. The CIA cannot stop us. Live hard, die free. Drive the crest to cavalry. Take back the nickel and dime. Arrest the politician on the eve Napoleon rides. For there is a war on earth fought with misinformation and waged and taxes waged by private firms who own public administration. But what is is not what once was and does not have to be. So filled with the memory of the thinning that exists around the Holy Rood, I prayed to the Lord of hosts, and ministering angels descended from heaven to whitewash the crowds with sense, infusing them with the ability to discern many things, secrets, and harbingers to days of sweet nectar, peace, and no more need for the Bible trade, a life of Rosh Hashanah for you, Christmas for eternity, Eid Mubarak, everyone, and salient blessings for all. I like to get half my set done with one poem. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let's see. Um, I'd like to thank Soul Food Coffee House for hosting. You know, make sure you buy something and support them, so that this place can host this great poetry reading series. And I'd like to thank Michael for curating and booking me. And one of the cool things about this reading series is uh, when you're invited to feature, you're asked to pick a co-feature, and I'd like to thank Robert Lashley for agreeing to read with me, and and thank you for going on after me, because I don't want to go on after you. He's amazing. You'll love him. And also another thing Soul Food asks you to do is to uh, pick a soul, what you consider a soul food poem, and <coughs> here's my soul food poem. It's called Rapture. In the age of third helpings, the fat shall fall from the vine, Juices of plenty shall flow, and mugs will clash in salutations. Gone will be the days of impoverished dinners and the second helpings of our fathers. I want to be served thrice, so fill my platter with rich foods basted in butter. For in that age, the abundance shall drip down my chin. In a stone garden, I have sat, waiting. I had visions of you as a child. A dark Madonna sands the suckling babe. You would answer the calls of the priests each Wednesday, in the evening, their time. But then I came from the high country to the sea to teach them religion, and you no longer had to suffer their ways. Now your body will be touched by one who is rightly guided and you will know that love comes from some other place. For when that demon of self-destruction lies dormant and asleep, you will hear whisper of your worth. And I will call you Magdalene, and together we shall be. This uh, next poem is called Urgot in the Rye. When the fog settles on the field as the fourth wind slows, mice will scratch patterns on church floorboards. And the spirits that silence the birds of the tree will push the sow down deep into the sty. On the day that neighbors can no longer plan their means to the cycles of the moon. But a man can lean on the Bible, smoking nightshade from a cob bowl to stand minister over the mandrake as Solomon had mastery over the jinn, till his children catch St. Antony's fire and misbirths plague the pure, running witter shins with eyes glued to the steeple. And the good wife, buried in the yard, was burned for black charisma and blind incantations. Matthew approaches her headstone on the right, departs the stone on the left, 
taking with him that damp cold that puts infirm into one's bones. For frost will soon come to those of us who sustain our provender through the mercy of the field. All right. More than that, okay. All right, geez. What am I going to do? Um, let's see. Uh, here's a poem that, uh, that um, there's this uh, classical music composer, Adam Shimmy, and um, he, uh, he was contracted to make this opera that was in the Betty Oliphant Theater in Toronto. Um, and he took poems, existing poems, and used them as lyrics. That was his concept. And, and I was the only living poet. <laughs> uh, he picked Ezra Pound and James Joyce, and this one by me. Um, there is a softness that comes from the cradle of affection certain exuberance spilling out from under that unconditional blanket. All I know is that she is loved and loved creatures are precious. So why couldn't I met you a long time ago when the ocean was born and the haze pulled me into existence from the fold? We could have been pleasure and I would have said to you the word and you could have taken from me that life-altering breath. I'm going to do one more, and uh, this is uh, this is a poem about the horrors of the male sex drive, because uh, women don't start wars, and um, yeah, so uh, I use the word drubby in it, which if you look up in the Urban Dictionary is is slang for this feeling a man gets upon release. So so beware of the drubby that wanders the cornfields at night, steals the souls of sleepers and drives them back to a time where men ate raw meat and not on dirt-covered roots, tore at women with a brute fang, proof of a love that a man can feel. Jim, why'd you do that evil deal? Out in the woods where only the frogs heard poor Delilah cry. Hey, Jim, can you tell me why? For that devil takes you, cast you back upon the wheel where Ligba presides over the cycle of reason to purge your ordeal. In the lesson of transformations where I sat on the wet nurse's lap, she sang songs about the old times in that far-off land where cracked hands beat spells upon drums and how to sell your soul to the drubby out on Highway 61. When he taps you on the shoulder, take the deal. Don't look back, and the grimoire will reveal its secrets, even to those who can't understand. But it was dropping hail when I came to the crossroads of my life, down in Beauregard, Mississippi, out on Route 49. So I gone through the thistle patch, contract in my hand, drew a circle in the cornfield where they go and see the drubby man. Hey, Jim, why you lay down your plow? Hey, Jim, left your woman to fend for the sow. Jimbo, gone to revel in the city swell, but stop steal peaches and asleep in the hay. They'll find you, Jimbo, find you one day. But tonight, you'll hop a freight train and dream of new lands where money and women come to a man with the strength of dreams and a mind to foretell. But there'll be no more wishes from the drubby secret well. And this was the prophecy that the angel foretold. A mannish boy would be born on the eve Delilah went cold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Very glad to have you here, knocking us out. Next, we have Robert Lashley, who has had poems published in such journals as Feminite, Feminite, No Regrets, and Your Hands, Your Mouth. His work was also featured in Many Trails to the Summit, an anthology of Northwest uh, form and lyric poetry published by Rose Alley Press. His full-length book, The Homeboy's Homeboy Songs, do you have copies? I'll, I'll play it. Okay, all right. Uh, was published by Small Doggies Press, um, 
uh, in April of 2014. He lives in Bellingham, and thank you for making the trip all the way here. It's a long way. And uh, he has a blog called The Compassionate Misanthrope, if you want to look that up online. Watch out. Here comes Robert Lashley. Thank you, everyone. I've, um, I'm going to give you everything I had. I've had a brutal week. We'll start with this one. Um, I was asked in the third grade what I wanted to be when I grew up. I didn't know the right answer. And the people said, um, oh, I want to be an astronaut. Other well, kids said, I wanted to be um, president, or I wanted to play for the Mariners. I said I wanted to be Whitney Houston's husband. This poem is in her memory, and in the memory of her baby, my Lord. Um, this poem is after Auden's In the Memory of W.B. Yeats. This poem is called Funeral Blues for Whitney. One, on the day you found what we were missing, a skinny, hungry, thugged out young boy stopped dead in front of a boombox. Runs were froze. Crap games almost deserted. Hood niggas disfigured by public statutes were transformed by the sound waves of you back in the day. On you and your instrument, we young thugs agreed you were wonderful back in the day. And far from our projects, little homies dreamed you an evergreen forest. Ghetto nerds were transfixed by radio plays scattered over a thousand stations. Scattered, squared to a thousand more affections immediately and all at once. Immediately, every time we heard you and called ourselves to be better than we were. Immediately, as we dreamed to be something grand, if not grandiose, if only to win your heart. If only then we would scheme up some shit to unearth the sword from our gravel stones and win, win you. And live happily in your kingdom, but the magic dust ate you alive. Earth, receive a troubled guest. Whitney Houston is laid to rest. Let this Newark sister lie emptied of our dreams. For in the nightmare of the dark, all the mask we had of your majesty ate your face. All our refusals to look into your blackness have blounded and scarred our eyes, have turned to brown ash on our crystal-strewn pedestals in a parable of genius and dust. And now you hang in memory over us, our lady of chemical and two human sorrows, trapped eternally in a crystal cage, only free in the shadow of Sirius. Only free in fleeting notes and electrons of youth, love, and limitless potential before yours turns slow to a curse. Thank you very much. I am, um, you have to forgive me, my memory fail, fails me and I forgot to ask you this question. What's the, what's the, what's the, the what's the, the rules on cuffing? You can't say it. Love you, man. This, um, this poem usually has um, a very long um, explanation, but sometimes the poem explana explains itself. This poem, after Wallace Stevens, is called 13 Different Ways of Looking at a Motherfucker in the Club. <laughs> One, among 20 bros at the club... The only thing moving toward my cousin was the eye of the motherfucker. Two, I was of three minds, like the IQ of the motherfucker in the club. Three, the motherfucker in the club whirled in the autumn wind. It was a small part of some corny bro dance. Four, a Maxim magazine and Axe body spray a one. A Maxim magazine, Axe body spray, and a motherfucker in the club, a one. Five. I do not know which to prefer. The time when the motherfucker in the club says to my cousin, Girl, I want to stop you up like a biscuit. Or... Girl, you look good enough to see some greens with. 
or Six. Bros fill the window with barbaric glasses of liquor a rapper drank on BET. The motherfucker in the club drank them to and fro. An indecipherable case. Seven. Oh, thin bros of Seattle. Why do you imagine that you can put rehypnol in my cousin's drink? Do you not know my juvenile assault record when you walk the feet of the young lady around me? Eight, I know noble accents and lucid and escapable rhythms. But I know, too, that if the motherfucker in the club gives her that drink, I'm going to catch a case. Nine, when the motherfucker in the club flew out the window. Ten, at the sight of the motherfucker in the club flying outside the window, a ball of euphony cried out, What did I tell you? What the fuck did I tell you? You put your hands on my tablet again? I'll get my back on your back? In front of your goddamn daddy. I swear for God and for more niggas, I'll bust, I'll, I'll, I'll bust your head to the white meat and, and kick your ass up another block to your butt fell out the frame. And where's the rest of you bros looking at? Which one of you want to ask the dentist to get their teeth fixed? Don't let the smooth twig fool you. Eleven. The motherfucker in the club ran past downtown with a busted hand. Once a fear pierced him, in that he mistook someone else for a person who was driven away. Twelve. The wind is howling. The motherfucker in the club is somewhere in a corner. Thirteen. <laughs> Thank you. How are we doing? Is everybody all right? Good to hear. Good to hear. We'll try something different. This is my soul food poem. I like to do things differently, as you probably have heard. And here's, a, and here's a curveball. This poem is called The Gang House Garden Thief's Love Ballad. For your garden, I will find you hot corner petals. I will put them in my crown royal bag. I will search past the weeds, the thickets, the nettles, Search past the suckers in their impossible tags and share with you my world in stems and in colors beyond reds and blues, those handkerchief flags. I will give you my lavenders beyond the hard metals in fortifiers, concretes, and faded do rags, for your love creates me, and love never settles for environment. So I'll work, I'll pick them, I'll snag. For your garden, I will find you hot corner petals. I will put them in my crown royal bag. Thank you. In Hilltop, I used to be a DJ. My DJ name was Brooke Shields because I had big ass eyelashes. About 20 years after the fact, a kid that I'm um, was um, talking about being a DJ, a kid from the suburbs of um, Whatcom County, a uh, young man, um, um, you know, saying and, and then kind of a crying, trying to do a mixture of hip hop and spoken word and doing neither. Um, Straight out of Ferndale, crazy motherfucker named Doug. Um, and um, he was talking about how DJs were, were pimps and the women who listened to them that were their, were, were their sex workers. And I was in a kind of trying to be in a positive frame of mind. And I, and I responded and said, no, that's not the truth. That's not really. And, you know, maybe get your, you know, you know, stick your, you know, get, your, get your life right, get your mind right. And he laughed in my face. So I wrote this villanelle that kept him killing him. This poem is called How to Not Think About Slavery While Listening to Three Six Mafia. Or, No, I Don't Think It's That Hard Out Here for a Pimp. 
Look away from the ice, the glitter and such. Do not think of cattle or oxen or pain for the pictures of silent say far too much. Don't think of the blood or the soul catcher's punch, the taking of bounty with encrusted chain. Look away from the ice, the glitter and such. Don't think of the gentry, the dogs of the Dutch, or the color of the dirt, the clay of the grain for the pictures of silent say far too much. Don't think of the auction, the prod of the touch, the sizing of the breast, the test the brain look away from the ice the glitter and such don't think of the bee of a chopping block crutch in the cut of the day come shine or come rain for the pictures of silent say far too much to think of it all is to think far too much to think far too much is to think you're insane look away from the ice the glitter and such for the pictures of silent say far too much thank you When I write political stuff, I do it my way, but I do it. Um, this poem is called um, Stopped and Frisked on Fraser and Woburn Suicide Blues. And it has an epigraph from Langston Hughes, what happened is to a dream deferred. Or does it explode? Or does it escape you? Does it leave in the quiet, in the sudden September, by nature, by water, in a circle of cars and men who plead your body like a drum? Men who plead your blood long after your skin lies in its veneer of matter. And after they finish, will the sun have too much light? Will the breeze and all its subtext violate your space and will the willow trouble your mind? Will the evergreens fixed in their portable promised lands color a life you'll never have again? Thank you. <laughs> what I'm reading with is the, the book that the, the, the I have the most of today. It's called Up South. It's um, a book. It's just... My homage to my neighborhood in Hilltop um, and, um, and just the elders that raised me, the elders with my mother. I was raised by, um, I was raised by opinionated white feminists and old black people. That's who, the, that's who I am. And, um, and it's just, I am proud of it. And, then, and, and it's different and I don't care. I'm proud of who, who I come from. And these are the, oh my, this is an homage to the people who I come from. Um, this poem is called Snake Lake Elders Rage at the Water Spirits After a Shootout. Refraction from the water is a ripple that eats then spits out an outline of the woods. The women in black dip their old tambourines and blur away from it. The old men tie their suits into knots and blur away from it. The people join and move their hands to deny his name in the cold. The water spirit brought us. The water spirit will not bring us home. They wash the memory of blood and ice and cry power in the darkness. The water spirit will not bring us home. Hums turn to shouts and chants rewoven into a memory more ancient than the ear. The water spirit will not bring us home. Frogs jump a beat back from their hand claps. Night bugs swarm but cannot trace steps of shadows and spirits in the water. The juba clap overrides the memory of sirens and funeral pyres. The gunshot at night is the 11th plague, so they part this iteration of the sea. The water spirit brought us. The water spirit will not bring us home. Two poems left. Two, two poems left. Thank you. Um, this has um, been one of the toughest weeks of my life. Um, on a Monday, 154. Um, 
find out that my mother has a tumor in the back of her head, and she has a, and a tumor in her eye, and they're finding ways to try and treat it, but it doesn't look good. And they're trying my, to find alternative ways to see, to treat her, and to think of it in that way. And then, six hours later, my grandfather, my male role model, um, um, has a stroke and is um, in the hospital. It's happened on Monday. So I, um, I'm in shambles. I, have, I wasn't able to go to Portland to get um, a print run of the Homeboy songs. This is um, books sold over um, 2,000 copies in print, thank God. Um, um, we, it was um, number eight in, um, in, in, at SPD in June of 2014, number 20 in, um, in, in, um, in, um, in, uh, in May of 2015, April of 2015. Um, but I do have some of the of um of South. I have about ten, and your your um it would um and the, the of South's only five dollars. So twenty five poems. It's a pretty good deal. You would be doing me a tremendous favor. If you, I don't usually sell that much. You'd be doing a tremendous favor if you bought one. And if you do any tremendous favor, you do you do you do me a tremendous favor if you buy a copy of my copies of of Brandon's books. Two poems. Um, my um, grandmother had a ride or die friend from Birmingham, Alabama, named Miss Yalela McDaniels. Um, was with her, was 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 tight with her for sixty-five years. Um. Miss Miss Yalela was loving, and 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 and, and uh, honorable and ethical and loyal, but men couldn't see that because because she because she wasn't wallpapering and cooking all day. All the goddamn time she was going to be a human being, so her church did, buried her dirty. I tried to. I tried to. This poem is called "Songs for Miss Yalela" after John Dryden's "Songs for Saint Cecilia's Day." In harmony, heavenly harmony, in universal love, they cry. The nature underneath the row of preaching deacons lay. They would not adorn her head. Church folks banished as heard on high. I mean, old Miss McDaniel's dead. In music, its power to obey. Order and stations makes its leap, but can or not leave or ground the spread. What passion cannot music raise and quell. Its sisters break their conscious shells. Its angry deacons stand their ground in reverence. Her loved one's faces fell, yet the choir comes alive in sound. The trumpet blows, but cannot summon Gabriel. The mezzo-soprano speak of Ariel, yet this hearth is an upraised altar and camped against her on her side. Her dying notes are never took in stride, yet the beat calls the crowd to a fever. But Lord, what can the one teach tonight? What voice can bring now heat or light away from her heretics in praise? Apollo's cynicism at Mascus' sight cries in its form over her wayward ways but cannot disguise itself as love. If the people need power, and there she lays, the procession moves but not with the spears in her last and dreadful hour. The church parlor pageant shall devour, but no bugles are heard on high. The alive are still with us. The dead have died. Yet no music here to retune the sky. One more short poem. This poem is after the E. Cummings poem of the same name, When God Lets My Body Be. When God lets my body be, from each rip wound shall spout a tree of fruit that exists only for you. My rosary beads will make you a laurel, 
of crowns, medallions, and alleyway garlands no one but us can see. My love, let me be your unknown color. Let my back beget an Afro sun that turns in our desks asunder. That recolors all my ordinary worlds into beauty from scabs of black that hold poison rivers. Then, my love, I will swim into hell and part out its ashen seas. Love, my legs are a nation of labyrinths. I want to wander with you with no thought to go home and no law greater than your conceit. My riddles and scars I will lay at your feet and alchemize into acres of or acres of orchids. I thank you very much, Soul Food Boss. Thank you for your poetry, Robert. I think you mean it. I'd like to uh, remind you of the next reading in the po Soul Food Poetry Night series. Coming up February 18, we have another Bellingham poet, Sheila Sondek, who's also reading with Caitlin Thompson. So please come back February 18 and bring friends or enemies if you, if you like. And I also want to mention that the next reading of the, Soul F of the uh, Redmond Association of Spoken Word is a week from tomorrow, so uh, January 29. And uh, something that's new and exciting about that series is that it's no longer going to be held at the Old Redmond Schoolhouse Community Center. Starting this month, uh, next week, it will now be held at the Vala Art Center in the Redmond Town Center. So we'll be surrounded by artwork instead of in a classroom. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. And we're starting with a party, or little snacks and I don't know what, uh, at 6 o'clock to celebrate the move there. And then the reading starts at 7, and we'll feature Chris Jarmick. So some good poetry. He has a new book out, too. So please come, come for that um, at, uh, at uh, the Vala Art Center, where Rasp is moving. It's now time to take a break. So get something to eat or drink. If you haven't yet signed up on the open mic, it's right down here. And please answer the question of the month beside your name. Print neatly so I can read it as best I can. And once again, thanks to Brandon and Robert for their poems. Let's take a break.
Okay, we're ready to get started again. We have a, a short number of just a few people who signed up for the open mic, but I'm uh, looking forward to what we have to hear. But before we get started, I want to read something to you um, that I planned to read um, last week and discovered that the person, one of the people who wrote this, uh, passed away this week. So uh, a memorial, if you like. Uh, this is by D. Henley and G. Fry. Um, and it goes like this. On a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair, warm smell of Kalidas rising up through the air. Up ahead in the distance, I saw a shimmering light. My head grew heavy, and my sight grew dim. I had to stop for the night. There she stood in the doorway. I heard the mission bell, and I was thinking to myself, this could be heaven, or this could be hell. Then she lit up a candle, and she showed me the way. There were voices down the corridor. I thought I heard them say, welcome to the Hotel California. Such a lovely place, such a lovely face. Plenty of room at the Hotel California. Any time of year, you can find it here. Her mind is Tiffany twisted. She got the Mercedes Benz. She got a lot of pretty, pretty boys that she calls friends. How they dance in the courtyard, sweet summer sweat. Some dance to remember, some dance to forget. So I called up the captain, please bring me my wine. He said, we haven't had that spirit here since 1969 and still those voices are calling from far away. Wake you up in the middle of the night just to hear them say, welcome to the Hotel California. Such a lovely place, such a lovely face. They're living it up at the Hotel California. What a nice surprise. Bring your alibis. Mirrors on the ceiling pink champagne on ice and she said we are all just prisoners here of our own device and in the master's chambers they gathered for the feast they stab it with their steely knives but they just can't kill the beast last thing I remember I was running for the door I had to find the passage back to the place I was before. Relax, said the night man. We are programmed to receive. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Glenn Fry, who died three days ago. Our first reader on our open mic tonight is LB, and the question of the month is, what was your first piece, the first piece of art you fell in love with? And there's a theme to a lot of the choices here, and the first one is in this theme, which is musical. Earth, Wind, and Fire, 1973, welcome LB. Thank you, thank you. And real quick, I'm gonna do my thing so I can get out of here. So uh, I cooked up a little piece here and uh, I wanna give y'all a little bit of inf information about the inspiration on what I'm gonna present here tonight. Because of the abuse of authority and the use of extreme uh, excessive force focused toward blacks and minorities all across this country over the past two and a half years has inspired me to create a little piece I call FTP. Now, mind you, if you like, feel free 
to show love at the very end because love is inspiration too. So without further ado, I give you FTP. So this what it's come to? Must it be? Death of another suspect in police custody? Look around. It's all in the black community where black lives don't matter, but we still want unity. Fuck the police now, 30 years later. While they're breaking our necks and saying they're doing us a favor? Fair law enforcement? Hell no, I ain't a hater. But we going at this like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. Police brutality? It's really nothing new. Most of us wouldn't think about it twice unless it happened to you. A basic traffic stop? It shouldn't be a thing until 56 baton hits later. Oh yeah, let's take it back to Rodney King. And if, and if they traffic stop and pull over a black female, oh well, cause she just might commit suicide, found dead, hanging in her holding cell. Shit, the cops will straight up shoot you dead in your back. Walter Scott can't tell us this now, so go check the facts. And yeah, they said PCP and a three inch knife, 16 shots, a cop takes another black teenage life. Hell, the cops in the KKK still got something in common to this day. So my advice to black people is be smart, cooperate, and stay out of the way. And we'll never forget six niggas straight out of Compton way back who said it best. Fuck the police. Damn, I'm glad I got that shit off my chest. FTP. I'd like to give a special RIP tribute to those who were referenced but names not directly mentioned. Freddie Gray, Sandra Bland, and Laquan McDonald. May they rest in peace. Real talk. FTP. Thank you. Thank you, and I love your T-shirt. So continuing on the musical theme, the piece of art our next reader first fell in love with was Pink Floyd's The Wall. Rose Gamble. I guess this will be my soul food poem because the fern first line refers to um, how I used to get my food. This is called Things That Don't Happen. One sunny Alaska July, picking salmon berries in the ditch, I felt something cold and wet and large on my knee. An intimate, cool suction embrace Glancing down at the opalescent trail that twisted up my extra tough boot, I knew I was not alone. My jeans were not my own. Not wanting to touch the repulsive, snot-covered, brown-black thing, I tried to pry, squeeze, repel it, but only nudged it further up my thigh. Grasping with bare fingers, I threw it to the ground. Why did you do that? I shrieked but it never answered. It happened at noon, and I still hadn't come down by midnight. Every system of me flashed honking red lights and stood up straighter than ever in my life. A Hlingit uncle said, things that don't happen, happen all the time, likening it to a starfish on his jigging line. That just doesn't happen, except it happened to me. Okay. And this is uh, Midwestern American makes friends with a Muslim. I'm from Nebraska, so. Multicolored layers, patchwork quilt, the way light glints off your fibers absorbed by your creases the magenta velvet of your words, my reflection in your eyes. Starched raw muslin rules hold society in place. The stiff collars and whale boning 
of our expectations of each other. The calico of rice and beans, a plate passed through map lines. Simple shelter, basic tunic, functional flat shoe, bones of our one body. Human race adorned in gold and red brocade. Tinkling bells, savory incense, a beaded chief's cap of distinction. A copper inlaid bowl for the clan mother. A bundle on a woman's head, wagon, backpack, ass laden low. Creaking leather straps and clap of hooves on the dust and stones of earth. We are naked under artifacts we carry from the quarters of the globe. Blankets, cloaks, and finery laid aside to bathe in the web of cool waters macrame around the earth like a glass fishing float. We do not sink. We swim. Emerge fresh again. Rise from the water as bare-skinned as we came into the world, enrobed in the colors fabrics and goods of a new day. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Another person who passed away uh, this month, um, Francisco X. Alarcon, who uh, I had the privilege of taking some uh, poetry workshops from in California and also published him in my old magazine, Tundra. And uh, his most famous book is called Snake Poems. And uh, this is a poem that I, I forget the exact origin of it, but I know I wrote it around the time that I took that workshop, maybe in that workshop uh, with Francisco Alarcon. And it's called Snake. Imagine yourself a snake. Lie on the floor, right where you are. Take off your arms, even your shoulders. Resign yourself to the permanent loss of opposable thumbs. Fuse your legs together down to your feet. Lose even your hips and weave your extended torso across the floor, slithering flagging your toeless tail in the same air where you extend your forking tongue. Now, write a poem. Do not add legs. Thank you. And another short poem of mine. This is Nepal 2015, and it's uh, about the earthquake they had there. The priest's passport lies in rubble from the crumbled rectory wall. The church bell dented under piles of bricks. Blossoms drift from nearby trees, their limbs now still after shaking. In the distance, snow on jagged mountains mixes with clouds, but the villagers do not look up. They are tossing bricks, crying out names of their children, cursing the priest who called them in. He will never go anywhere again. Oh, thank you. Next up, we have somebody else who picked a musical uh, piece of art that they liked, Moving Pictures by Rush. Johan, come on up. How y'all doing? Yeah, my uh, my brother certainly influenced my first uh, selection in uh, in music. Um, Cause you know it was a lot uh, a lot freer to just listen to the albums that he bought, uh, and uh, 
there were some great songs off of uh, Moving Pictures. Tom Sawyer, all about a rebel, witch hunt, all about how people judge and criticize without understanding. <coughs> and uh, other than that, it's a pretty upbeat album. <laughs> Uh, I thought I'd uh, I'd go with the first uh, first poem I ever wrote. Um, this was a, in fourth grade, mind you. So, <laughs> uh, roses are red, grasses are green. Have you ever seen a ninety foot bean? If I did, I'd cook it in a parking lot. Or wait, I'd cook it in a giant pot. The stove would be a parking lot. I'd invite all my neighbors in to eat. All we'd have would be the great big bean, the biggest bean you'd ever seen, and that's the story of the giant bean. Um, yeah. Uh, I just want to go ahead and let you know now, um, I haven't gotten that much better since then. But I uh, certainly enjoy it, you know, just as much. So, uh, The latest uh, a piece of poetry I wrote, I suppose, uh, was, uh, you know, the, all the debacle about, you know, Christmas or solstice or this or that. And I, I woke up one morning when it was solstice and uh, just uh, jotted down a few lines. <clears throat> the cycle, the circle, seamless woven light, stretched to break through on the longest night. Dream time here, dream time there. Witnessing, making, creation happening. You'll get your fire going in survival's crunch time. The opposite of live, the evils recognize this. Some are buying that the junction is a crisscrossed mess. Shadow fairies dance to the snaps of the fire. Shadow fairies dance on the edge of vision. Stretching fear until there's nothing there. Gather round, gather round, celebrate life. With laughing, dancing, feasting, spirit grows from the hearth. And uh, let's see, I had occasion to, uh, to visit Orcas Island for a little while, and uh, <clears throat> I uh, often find myself in libraries and uh, jotted down this poem there once when I was uh, just uh, witnessing, uh, I guess, and experiencing just the awe of all the written words and, and, and whether it helped us or, or not, right? So, can rhythm, momentum be felt or heard from the page? Can life experience be mirrored with a language or marred with a lingua? Do physical symbols design the mind? Is memorization a waste of time? Memorize, mesmerize. How many words heard now are their actual size? To inscribe them in stone for future generations won't ensure communications, murmur ancient Egyptians. And I guess I've got, uh, can I go with one more there? On. All right, all right. <clears throat> uh, some of you might know they host a uh, really relatively popular uh, astrology night here with uh, Rick Levine on the first Wednesdays of the month. And um, so one, one day I woke up and, uh, and uh, wrote down this poem about uh, the planet Saturn, I suppose. Saturday, ruled by Saturn, stern overseer of strength, Sharpish the thoughts sailing through space, split with timely precision as approaching the sound rings through to truth and marrow. Spirit, sensing sublime emanation, realizes ego is all death's sky can harvest. To be or not to be is no longer the question. Perhaps Satori through smoke or Satori through spirits. Why not both? Answered the beautiful woman. Janice calls Sarah Bellum. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Next up, we have Kavika West, and uh, his favorite, uh, his first piece of art that he fell in love with first was a fisherman's sculpture at Fisherman's Terminal. So, uh, a little departure from music. And we have a guest reader who will read for Kavika, and that's Brandon Pitts. So come on up.
Okay, I'm reading for Kavika here. This is called Art. Art, weakened by the obvious, but highlighted by the observer's bright mind. Art is only the remainder retained by the audience. Not obvious oils are words left behind. Twisted, turned with hidden faces, and clear to all when open to the curious mind. To the soul observing from the unique perspective of the disinclined in the mirrors of the mind. Kavika, encouraging all my friends to enjoy it all. Aloha now, aloha all. Thank you. And I've also asked uh, Brandon and Robert if they would read one more poem each for us. I don't know who wants to go first, but we'll close off with... Okay, here we go. All right, Tom. You all right with a drug poem? All right. Okay, uh, I have this friend who studied the healing arts in India, and she... Uh, for my birthday, she gave me these mushrooms, and she was like, these are different mushrooms, not the kind that grow in the cow patties back home, but this is what they made, the Brahmins would make soma out of. And she's like, a portion it, you can do it twice, but don't do them together, it's too much. So I did it together, of course. And then, while slobbering all over the page, I wrote this poem. We are the spore stars, watching the planets, charting the horizon, finding the patterns in all things. We are the Chaldeans, underwriters of the heavenly war, debating on the number string, mapping out the luminous orbs. Soma constitutes the greater part of our geometry. We anoint with semen as the spermatozoa swims in an array, fanning out like tendrils, veins in the Gothic arch. We are the apostles of the eternal glory, laying on our backs in bliss, accepting the throb and thrust within the plasmatic ocean of the never-ending womb. For the void is pleasant, and love is the best thing in any world, and we are eternity in insemination, holding all the answers. We are the Brahmins, princes of the cosmic waste, that primordial gland that issues chaos throughout creation while expanding the universe through pulse and penetration. O oh, great potential, showing us glimpses of your splendor, we are the righteous tribesmen seeking out the menstrual cycle of the lunar houses, for creation is our highest act. As we reap from the broken veil where there is no time, we are the harvesters of wisdom marked by apostolic succession, phosphorant Christian halos and Phrygian caps, the Aryan council in the darkened night where neon mandalas glow in the fray. We are the sailors on the event horizon with our third eye tethered to the sacred gem, the zephyr of nothingness, the priestly elect above judgment and the laws of average men with our days spent in stasis, swimming, in the ocean of God. Thank you, everyone. Um, um, thank you, Brandon, for, for picking me to read with you. Um, um, I... Um, We find something uh, um, that will um, that will be a, a good kickoff for the night. Um, for my grandfather. In 2012, his son lost his soul and hurt him, and he ended up going to the hospital, my grandfather. And from these conversations, um, and my grandfather, he, he's, he's used to poets. My uncle Mo was the first poet in my family. 
And um, and he um. So like, he'll say things like, "Write it." If we have an idea, a good idea, write it down. So in this kind of idea, um, think of this poem right now. This poem is called Big Daddy's Lament for Big Mama. There are times, times, boy, when I dream of death. Time is a dream now of her face in the rain. These times, boy, I feel I have nothing left. Time centers around the way that she left. Yet time has no way to center this pain. There are times, times, boy, when I dream of death. My time is a weight, a burden. A heft to carry another day and again and again. These times, boy, I feel I have nothing left. Time saved me from the swinging, those roots, those roots, that clef. That her branches still bleed now, still bleed in my brain. There are times, times, boy. When I dream of death, time calls it passage, boy, I call it theft. In my dreams, the tile is a burning red plain. In these times, boy, I feel I have nothing left. And I will keep going, I'll wander, I'll drift to that last meeting place, and I will walk in. But there are times, times, boy, when I dream of death. There's times, boy, I feel I have nothing left. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. That that would be um, a fitting place to end our evening tonight, but we do have one more open mic reader uh, whose first piece of art she fell in love with was Orange Roses. Please welcome Jessa Young. I was in a hurry to sign that sign-up sheet, and um, I didn't realize that it said write down the, the first piece of art that I fell in love with. Um, that's the title of the poem I'm going to read. Uh, so I'll have to think about that question. <laughs> so I'm actually a, a lyricist, I'm a songwriter, and I wasn't gonna read anything tonight, but I remembered a song that I wrote that was first a poem, and so I thought it would be fitting to read it. It's been a long time um, since I've read it that way as just a poem. And I don't mean just a poem by saying that. Orange roses bloomed along the highway. I didn't see them for a long time until one day the rain came down like dragon's tears. I ran naked in the rain and from deep within the flowers came. At first I saw them all around me everywhere but in myself. The wind blew the thoughts through my mind like a sieve. As I ran in the desert, the sand stung my skin. When I was 21, I said, fuck you to anyone who dared see me skin deep. When I'm 60, I hope I look in that mirror and see a young girl still. Through the laughter, through the clutter, through the broken pieces, I still find myself like orange roses as their petals fall through the air like rain. Thanks, and I just want to close out the evening with uh, 
something that uh, one of my favorite humans that ever walked the planet said. Uh, Martin Luther King said, Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. So I think that's a great reason to have poetry in the world. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to end tonight by reading another piece that I didn't write. And it's for people who see the y their young selves in the mirror. I took my love, I took it down, climbed a mountain and turned around, and I saw my reflection in the snow-covered hills till the landslide brought it down. Oh, mirror in the sky, what is love? Can the child within my heart rise above? Can I sail through the changing ocean tides? Can I handle the seasons of my life? Well, I've been afraid of changing because I've built my life around you, but time makes you bolder. Even children get older, and I'm getting older too. Oh, take my love, take it down, climb a mountain and turn around. And if you see my reflection in the snow-covered hills, well, the landslide will bring it down. The landslide will bring it down. Good night.